economically not good for Britain, a country which is very dependent on migrant labour, um, for the very high skill things and the things in the city of London, and for right at the bottom where we want people, you know, the Brits won't do the jobs of picking fruit and so on, and we do need, you know, migrants for that. Uh, triple the number of UK borders agency staff engaged in controlling immigration to 30,000. Um, well, perhaps yes, perhaps no. I think a better one would be integration with the police, but we'll leave that aside. Um, they're talking about doubling prison paces, places, scrap the Human Rights Act, um, introduce a three strikes and you're outlaw. Um, so that that's, you know... If you if you steal three loaves of bread, um, I'm, no, I'm taking it to extremes. You go to prison for life. That is wrong. Um, boost the military budget by forty percent. Um, but you know, I'm not sure off the top of my head what the figures are for how much we we spend on the MOD, and I should really know that. But it's um, you know, where we find that money from, given you know, given that the economy is already under a hell of a lot of stress. I don't know. Um, look, you know, and, uh, there's you know, there's a lot of you know defence, various things where they're spending a lot of money, keeping uh, Britain's independent nuclear deterrent strong. Um, that is very expensive. For instance, expand the army by twenty five percent and double the territorial army, double the reserves. That is a hell of a lot of money. Um, yeah, uh, expand the Royal Navy to its 2001 strength. The problem is these aren't costed. They're going to say that these are coming from the cost efficiency, you know, the savings in government and from growing the economy. Well, it isn't that simple. Um, yeah, so firstly, it takes time for those to filter through. Secondly, uh, you can't really count savings till they happen. Thirdly, there's a cost to the savings that they're making, um, both in terms of the administration of working down the state, but also in terms of the, you know, people are doing useful functions and are losing their jobs. Um, healthcare in the NHS. Um, keep the NHS free at the point of delivery and make no cuts to frontline services. Um, and restore free NHS dental checks, checkups, and eye tests. And that is appealing to their core, you know, base. And there's quite a few older people for whom that's very important. Now, I happen to agree with those particular policies. I would love to see eye tests and dentistry back on the NHS properly, um, but that's expensive, and you know, I'm not sure we could afford it at the moment. Um, but also, libertar libertarian, it is not. Populist, perhaps. Libertarian, not. Um, so I'm, there, there's quite a lot to go through here. Um, there's a lot of um, there, there. There is an ongoing tension between their regionalisation because they're talking about um, county health boards and uh, sorry. Let me start again. There is an tension. They're saying they want to devolve a lot more powers to counties um, and then you know, the rest go back up to the central centralised um, part of the state. The UK is a very centralised country, as I've said before. Until um, the evolution to um, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and London, it went straight from London to the county level, you know, large municipal level. Um, yes, that was a problem. We're still very centralised. Um, outside of London, in England, everything is, you know, it goes straight from county to the the, the top level. Um, and there, there is a need, I think, for more responsive local provisioning. But I would say that counties generally aren't big enough um, to effectively provide the services that you would want provided at a lower level than the than the top. I would personally argue for some sort of regions, but that, that's a controversial point. Um, just to say that there, there is there is something there. They're talking about bringing in workfare. Leave the EU and continue free trade with European countries. No jobs will be lost. Um, Establish a Commonwealth free trade area. Um, from, okay. The point is, it depends what you mean by you know remaining in free trade with the EU. If they're just talking about EFTA, we're still covered by quite a lot of decisions of the uh, ECJ. I think it's the ECJ. Um, you know, if they're talking about going to something very you know, very loose, where we just agree to to have um, no tariffs. Well, you know, that, that is going to cost jobs because we are not in the same system of rules. And so there is a, it is harder, um, given variation that would occur, for us to export uh, to Europe. 
conversely for us to import from Europe. Um, the, you know, there's various other things. The point I'd say about a lot of them is that um, they are expensive. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to number 17. Um, immediately withdraw from the common fisheries policy and take back control of waters up to 200 nautical miles from the UK. Return 2.5 billion per annum in fish sales to the UK economy. Uh, ban shameful discarding of fish and abandon all EU quotas. Okay. Around the, the waters around Europe are running out of fish, and unfortunately, the waters around Europe ex extend all the way to the Grand Banks off, Con off Canada. Um, they're running out of fish because we keep eating the fish. Um, raise my hand, I like fish, I like eating fish, but we have got to manage them better, and that means international coordination one way or, or another so that there are hard limits on the amount of fish we are extracting so that those fisheries can recover, so that our children and grandchildren will be able to eat fish and chips. Um, quite clear, <laughs> there are some species which are on the brink of collapse, some, which have, some fisheries which have collapsed. Um, you know, they're, you know, so they're, I, I just reject that outright, because even if we didn't have the EU, in order to manage fisheries effectively, we would need international cooperation. Um, then, um, 15, culture and restoring Britishness. End support for multiculturalism and promote one shared British culture for all. That is imposition of a culture decided at the top on everybody. Now, I think it's fairly hard to say that I'm not British. I was, you know, born here, my parents are Brits, you know, so on and so forth. Um, you know, there's a lot of things about British culture that I particularly like. There are some bits, though, that I, you know, I find a bit dodgy, the bits that vote for UKIP. But I would say that there is no one British culture. Um, we're not a homogeneous group, and I don't want something imposed on, on us from the top. Whereby anybody who disagrees with it, it is somehow traitorous or not a proper Brit. Um... There's some stuff about uh, introducing the English Parliament. You can have a debate about that. I think it's an inefficient way of, uh, uh, of doing it. Ban the burqa and the veiled niqab in public buildings and certain private buildings. That is not libertarianism. That is uh, going to worsen community relations um, and is stepping on the rights of those people who would choose to wear um, those forms of dress. Um, Scrap political correctness in public affairs. In other words, they want to be rude about people. I dislike UKIP intensely. Like I said, libertarians they are not. Populist nationalists, nationalists they are. And that is the ideology they have taken on. And as further evidence of that, we can look at the Europe of Freedom and Democracy group of political parties in the European Union, of which they are mem a member. Let's look at the other parties who they share with. You have the Danish People's Party, or you probably better ask Vogter about the Danske Folkepartei. Populist nationalists again. True Finns, um, not someone I know a lot about. Um, movement, uh, movement for France, uh, not someone I have to say I know a huge amount about. Then someone I do know a bit about, Laos, the Greek Popular Orthodox Rally. Now, that's orthodox as in the Orthodox Church. Uh, yeah, hostile to immigrants, hostile to non-Orthodox people. They've been fouling up the relationships with the Republic of Macedonia, um, and you know, religious populist nationalists. We then have the Italian Lega Nord, um, Umberto Bossi, their leader. Um, his solution to illegal immigration is to f open fire on boats coming from Africa. The Lithuanian Order and Justice Party, some I don't know much about. Um, the Dutch Reformed Political Party. Now that's Reformed as in Calvinism. They're the Calvinist Party. Uh, the Slovic, Slovak National Party, um, who, who are an ugly lot. Uh, yeah, their politics, I mean. He, uh, their lead, well, they're anti-Hungarian. Their leader has described uh, Hungarians as ugly, bow-legged, mongoloid characters on disgusting horses, so his descendants of those. Um, he said that he would, you know, he wants to send, you know, sit in his tanks and uh, shoot at um, Budapest. And he said the best policy for dealing with Roma gypsies uh, is a long whip and a small yard. As I said at the top, this is the start, this is the perfect party for Pat Condell, because Pat Condell's atheism is incidental to his dislike of Islam and his dislike of Muslims. Um, going in with these people who, you know, were the, you know, yeah, the UKIP are the uh, 